I gave a talk on uh, brain and memory in San Diego. And it was uh, But uh, there was a request saying that uh, strictly memory and the uh, brain is uh, no application. Therefore, today, the first part I'm going to give you the overview of a current uh, study, recent research on the brain and mind, and brain and memory in particular. And then the latter part, with a request from the president here, asking me to speak uh, application. So I would like to talk about the recent uh, development in the research on Alzheimer's diseases. So today, my uh, talk will be two parts. One is a brain and memory, and another is a clinical application for Alzheimer's disorders, because this is the uh, very preponderant uh, re disorders. And uh, the reason I list all this, uh, my affiliation, is that uh, my research and my teaching and my clinical activities are from various uh, colleagues of mine. So it is not just my own work. So this is a summary of many institutions of work uh, today I'd like to present. I hope uh, you all can hear in the back. Is that OK? OK, good. So let's start. Essentially, this is a summary of the functional organization of a memory system. When information about uh, what is going through the uh, cortical stream into perirenal cortex, and then the where is actually uh, through the uh, parahippocampal cortex. And then these two uh, information got into hippocampus. So today, we need to remember three main area, where and what. And so this uh, slide showed that the when and where integrate into hippocampus, and from there, getting into uh, prefrontal cortex. So this is the essential mechanism, but this we don't uh, usually remember. What is this all about? So I would like to start with the main uh, focus of the uh, memory is the hippocampus. The hippocampus is uh, known to be involved in the complex process of forming and storing the memory is the, in the hippocampus. Now, several studies have set new light on the contribution of the hippocampus to memory. The many experiments have shown that the hippocampus is critical to learning, remembering, and characterizing space, providing context to experiences and other associated sequential or logical relationship. So hippocampus 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 to connected to memory and meaning. In other words, the hippocampus might be connected the memory of your first day at school with the information about the physical surrounding, the smell, and the sound of the event. So hippocampus. Though this is the diagram of hippocampus. So hippocampus is the the area like uh, uh, the shape is like uh, uh, in uh, it goes a high bed, high bed hippocampus. Uh, uh, the uh, the one which is uh, actually frequent is the hippocampus. One way to look at the hippocampus 
that in regard to memory is to examine a person with damaged hippocampus. If a hippocampus is damaged, then we will see what happened. Many people, we, we learn a lot uh, from uh, uh, damaged hippocampus, have anterograde amnesia. They can remember the distance past, but cannot form new memories. So this is anterograde uh, amnesia. They can, however, learn new skills. Then the stress and memory are intermingled with the, uh, the fact of the, if you are under stress, there is an over secretion of stress hormone, adversely affect brain function, especially memory. So a stage fright actually due to a stress. Too much cortisol can prevent the brain from laying down a new memory or from accessing already existing uh, memories. Researchers have shown that sustained stress can damage the hippocampus, the part of the limbic brain which we actually described for a while. These effects are associated with structural changes in hippocampal neurons. The CARP is a group of hormones known as a corticosteroids or a cortisol. And during stress period, the adrenal glands release adrenaline. And if the feeling of stress persists, the adrenal then release cortisol. Once in the brain, cortisol remains much longer than adrenaline, where it continues to affect brain cells. Excessive cortisol can make it difficult to think or retrieve long-term memories. That's why people get befuddled and confused in severe crisis. Then the next important uh, uh, organ, small, but uh, it's called amygdala. The amygdala is involved in memory consolidation or the com combining of memory of made memories. Memory come into hippocampus is not immediately consolidated. After something is learned or experienced, a long-term memory for the event is not formed instantaneously. So short-term memory and long-term memory are different. Information regarding the event is slowly assimilated into long-term potential lifelong storage over time, possibly through long-term strengthening of nerve impulses. Recent studies show that despite the amygdala not being a long-term memory storage site, and learning can occur without it, one of its role is to regulate memory consolidation in other brain regions. So other brain regions, uh, memory storage actually related to amygdala. So here is the uh, hippocampus and amygdala, its relationship in terms of anatomical structure. Then another important thing is that we remember our emotional experiences. So the amygdala has long been linked with the person's emotion. Feeling, they, this is a recent uh, uh, new research in this area, elaborate the uh, amygdala's function. The region of the brain where memories of our past are supported and retrieved also serve as a hub that link uh, familiar music, memory, as well as emotion. So Dr. A, you remember so many memory Essentially, it's uh, related to emotional memory. By hearing a familiar piece of music, call back memory of a particular person or a place or emotion when you are very young, uh, uh, pursuing your lover, you remember not just that person, but remember the smell, remember the uh, everything happened at that occasion. This is a very uh, well experienced by all of us. 
then sleep and memory. This is a very oh, paradoxical. People feel that uh, you, you shouldn't sleep and uh, go to study very hard and go to examination. You remember when you were a student in a medical school, you don't sleep and uh, try to remember everything. Uh, after the exam, all those totally disappeared. <laughs> it's because during the sleep, it's consolidate our memory. So in Germany, recent study showing that the brain did better during sleep than during wakefulness at preventing attempts to corrupt a memory. Essentially, during the uh, sleep, the memory consolidation actually happened. Then without the sleep, many other memories interfere with the one which you try to consolidate. So as memory store in the hippocampus, do not zero immediately. Learning a second item immediately afterwards may distort the original memory. We we did the experiment at the Harvard, medical, uh, Harvard uh, schools uh, memory, divided into two groups. One, who we teach them uh, how to solve the problem and let them sleep afterwards. Another group teach them to remember those, but no sleep. On the following day, with the examination. Those who took the uh, sleep examination, perfect. Those who didn't sleep, the uh, examination result is not as good as those who sleep. So sleep is uh, not, not tell your kids. You are always sleeping, you don't, you, you don't study. Sleep and uh, 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 memory is very important. By sleeping immediately after learning an item, research showed that one stores this new item better by not allowing new information to disrupt the information which you learn. So this is the basic for the memory and recent uh, publication in the area of memory. Now I'd like to shift with a request from this uh, or association asked me to talk about uh, how this could be applied to our recent uh, concern on memory, dementia, and particularly Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's diseases actually affect possibly us, affect possibly our relatives. We have to take care of them. And this is a very important illness. The Alzheimer's disease causes brain changes that gradually get worse. It is the most common cause of dementia, a group of brain disorders that cause progressive loss of intellectual and social skill, severe enough to interfere with day-to-day -day life. In Alzheimer's disease, brain cells re related to memory and judgment and other brain function, as I described before, degenerate and die, causing a steady decline in memory and mental function. So it is estimated by World Health Organization that there are currently about 18 million people worldwide with Alzheimer's diseases. This figure is projected to nearly double 34 million by 2025. All of us, if we live for long enough, who suffer from Alzheimer's. So don't think that uh, I'm, I'm so good. I take all the nutrition and everything, exercise, and therefore uh, we are not going to suffer from Alzheimer's. The, uh, the uh, uh, incidence of Alzheimer's rapidly increase after age 70 and 80 and 90. So to live longer is fine, but to live healthy. Uh, don't suffering from dementia. That is the important thing so we have to pay attention to. So what is Alzheimer's disease? Current Alzheimer's disease modification and management strategy can temporarily, not permanently, improve symptom, maximize function, and maintain independence for a period of time. It is also important to seek social services and tap into 
your support network coming to this uh, meeting to see your friends. Social support is very important. Research effort aim to discover treatment that prevent Alzheimer or slow its progression is very, very gradual, very slow. So the current research interest with the national and international studies, we also learned that the treatment of Alzheimer seemed to be not very effective. We already found out that why. Why is that uh, we are studying those whose brain cells have already died, most of them. And to recover those cells would be very, very difficult. So the field is now moving into early detection before the onset of real Alzheimer clinical diagnosis. It's already diagnosed as uh, Alzheimer. It's already too late. So now the study moving into before the symptom develop, clinician can give you the diagnosis of Alzheimer. That is the time the, the intervention should take place. Now, so for all of us to look into us or our relatives, we need to recognize the early signs of Alzheimer. So these we always experience, forgetting significant dates and events. But this we all experience. But uh, if once or twice, that's fine. But it's always this happened recently, we have to pay attention to. Next, is losing track of numbers, having trouble handling money or dealing with numbers. So this is a very important thing to remember. So if your husband start to show these kind of sign, uh, please just uh, pay attention to. That is a time to start to intervene. Next, flustered by routine activities, getting lost on the way to your favorite store. I keep shopping. I don't know. Another one, if your dear husband uh, drive a car and always hitting the brakes, meaning that the judgment of the distance between his own car and the uh, front car seem to be not right. So hitting brake uh, more often. But uh, if you learn the, uh, uh, how to learn the, how to drive the drive, uh, to drive your car, always hitting the brake, that doesn't count. <laughs> it's uh, only when you drive uh, a car smoothly and start to hit quite often that we should uh, pay attention to. Misplacing seem more frequently particularly losing car keys. And you forget the where your car key is. And somehow, when you open the refrigerator and find, ah, oh, my key is in the refrigerator. <laughs> so this is the very interesting uh, phenomena we have to pay attention to. Poor decision making. Food, food is burning on the stove, and you don't know what to do. And also, very bad investment. Or in the middle of good marriage, suddenly go out to have extra marital affairs. <laughs> so those are very poor uh, uh, judgment, judgment, OK? Not knowing the uh, consequence of the, those uh, uh, behavior. So become more withdrawn, uh, less social. The cooking class you used to love isn't so much fun anymore. Or, or, and the diabetes, insulin resistance and high blood sugar may lead to complications that damage brain cell as well as a blood vessel that bring oxygen and nutrients to your brain, raising your risk of Alzheimer's. So essentially, for all, all of you who are uh, trained in medical school, Two important things uh, neuropathology try to find is the plaques and tangles, neurofibrillary tangles. 
And these are, are shown here with a plaque. Uh, today, it is not pathology lecture, so I'm not going to go into you. You already seen those uh, in your uh, medical student era. And this is the uh, uh, tangles. Now, we still don't know what is the real cause of Alzheimer's. Scientists believe that for most people, Alzheimer's disease results from a combination of genetic, lifestyle, and environmental factors that affect the brain over time. Less than 5% of the time, Alzheimer is caused by specific genetic changes that guarantee a person will develop the diseases. Those are very early onset. We already found a several genes in the family, and all those are very early onset, usually for the Alzheimer age of onset is after age 55, 65, and 75. So those early onset one may be, have a genetic uh, uh, determinant. While the causes of Alzheimer's are not yet fully understood, its effect on the brain is clear. Alzheimer's disease damage and kills brain cells. Those cells which I'm talking about, uh, hippocampus, uh, various areas, parahippocampus, and also amygdala. So you, you can see that the Alzheimer patient uh, become apathetic, and they cannot uh, make a judgment. That is the pre uh, frontal also affected. Essentially, in Alzheimer, all the brain uh, cell is are affected. So, risk factors and preventive intervention for Alzheimer diseases. Many of my studies have investigated risk factor for Alzheimer diseases. The most recent one, the meeting calling, called by National Institute of Health of the United States, found that uh, of all the publication, there are no sufficient evidence to support the association of any particular modifiable factor with risk of cognitive decline for affective uh, Alzheimer's diseases. There are many speculations, but uh, there is no convincing evidence. There is the national and international study and to try to find the treatment and the intervention. But there are certain other uh, diseases which may affect the uh, risk of uh, developing Alzheimer's. Diabetes, meritus, high cholesterol in midlife, and current tobacco usage associated with increased risk of Alzheimer's. Now, already previous speaker already mentioned about the diet. Diet seemed to be very important. It seemed to the researcher, those who live in the Mediterranean uh, area seem to have, those diets seem to be much healthier uh, because they eat uh, uh, much fish and uh, don't eat um, uh, much meat, animal meat. And the folic acid intake, low or more alcohol intake, cognitive activities and physical activity were associated with decreased risk. If one start to develop the early sign of Alzheimer, don't ask that person to stop doing things. Encourage these people to participate and to, to do more exercise, not just uh, physical exercise, but brain exercise. Those are very important to essentially uh, reduce the rapid deterioration of mental function. The quality of evidence was low for all of this association. The NIH current report by uh, convening the, all the experts in this area, taking into consideration all NIH funded the project. The group uh, got together say there is no conclusive evidence of which one is definitely causing uh, the uh, deterioration and the death of nerve cells. The conclusion of that report, 
saying that the insufficient evidence exists to draw firm conclusion on the association of any modifiable factors with risk of Alzheimer's diseases. It's very pessimistic. But uh, we have to live with those who suffer. As a doctor, you have to help those who are suffering from Alzheimer's. So there are many references uh, here. I uh, actually, based on this, it is not just uh, my own uh, research. There are many, many uh, references uh, which is here. You may hear the recent uh, uh, publication which caused a lot of sensation, but there is no conclusive evidence. Some of you have heard that uh, insulin treatment, nasal spray, just uh, published uh, in one of the uh, neurology journals, saying that the uh, nasal spray of the insulin may help the mild cognitive uh, deficit. But uh, actually, the need to have a, a better, bigger sample, a need to have a well-controlled study to really justify that is the treatment. So th this is the, and there are many drugs, many uh, drugs which have been utilized to treat uh, uh, cognitive deficit, but uh, no one is now conclusive saying that uh, this is it. So more research uh, needs to be done. So in conclusion, I say, of all the NIH, U US government, spending so much money on the Alzheimer, we have not come up to grasp with what, to, if today I tell you, I already found something, I'm lying to you. I'm honestly telling you that the lots of uh, researchers are trying to see what we can do. The only conclusion now is that we have to do study on those who, before developing the illness, those who already given the diagnosis of Alzheimer's to study them, it's already too late. So now there is the one uh, disorder called MCI. Neurologists all know the mild cognitive deficit. So that is the, the subject of the study. Or even before that, the selection of the population uh, of the study should be pay attention to. So today I just give you some of the overview uh, to talk about Alzheimer would take a long, long time uh, to really uh, show you all the references which I uh, listed. So I think uh, I will, I'll stop here. Yes. Okay, no valid, reliable uh, laboratory test is available. However, recent uh, several publications showing that uh, spinal tap from the CSF, you may have a hint of a potential uh, indication for Alzheimer, but it's not conclusive. So no test at this time. If I say, yes, there is a test in my lab, I'm lying to you. So there is no reliable, uh, valid test at this time. Mm -hmm. Yes? Can you volunteer as a uh, guinea pig? Oh, yeah. Uh, there are many uh, uh, cent centers. Uh, locally, you know what? Oh, locally, yes. At the UCSD, at the UCLA. Just, uh, just far away. Just uh, one half hour drive. Yeah, yeah. One half. UCLA, yeah, UCLA, UCS, US, USC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, yes. They have a center. Yeah, UCI, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, but uh, it's not, uh, not uh, totally uh, valid. There are many, many uh, studies shown 
it is not uh, always consistent. The fact that diagnosis is a problem is your spouse. Why? Because your spouse is very important. Yeah. Right. 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 Anti-depression, anti-anxiety drugs, Paxil, etc. All by alternative medicine, by medication, breathing by all that kind of thing. <laughs> I think uh, you are right. Since we don't have a concrete method to treat, so everyone try to do anything possible. So alternative medicine, meditation, Tai Chi, uh, acupuncture seem to help, but uh, we need the evidence of these are actually helpful. Subjective uh, uh, report is not going to help. Subjective to say, yes, I received the meditation uh, treatment or I practice meditation and therefore my memory improved. That is the only one experience. <laughs> okay. And the medication the same. An early onset of Alzheimer's. Do you uh, study their behavior, their mental process, or do you actually pull the hole and take some brain cell out? No, you shouldn't uh, uh, take the brain cell out. That is uh, illegal. I think uh, what we study is now there are many ways of studying them. The uh, one usual uh, uh, test is using the cognitive test. There are many, many tests which are involving to test your mental function. And also, neuroimaging may be helpful, but not uh, always 100% uh, right. And the, there are some genetic testing, but that is only for 5% of those Alzheimer's. The rest of them are due to many, many genes involved. It's not just uh, one gene. I think uh, we have a neurologist from here. You, you can add something. I may ask one question.那个，呃，我表示一下意见，也是我有点想总结这样子，但呃，不晓得你们有没有同意，也可以再专家可以。我就是说，大家都喜欢那个很长面白瘦嘛，对不对？然后那个，呃，所以我们今天的主题是
跟刚才讲的这些又不一样。我们在讲这个呃 ，sleep， how the sleep help to consolidate the memory， 这个意思，不不是说你常常睡觉，你的 memory 就非常好。<笑>还有没有什么问题？你你好。对，你的长度，这个你刚才讲的，好像是你的 brain 是一个机器，我要五分钟，一分钟，睡不是那么容易，现在容易。这个 optimum 现在的这个呃 research 的 indication 是 taking a nap is very important。Yeah， 哎，下午睡觉的时候不要一直在那边打瞌睡，就是。坐下来，五分钟、十分钟的 taking a nap help you brain restore your energy。没什么问题。有什么要加的？呀，刘教授，什么要补充的？不要用英文讲。那个，对我觉得教授讲的那个，在 neurology 来讲的话。的想法就是很类似，但是 neurology 更需要希望说有一些你的 biomarker 哦。那因为如果说在已经有症状的时候，在在做治疗，其他治疗上都是都是一些是症状的一治疗。这对我们来讲的话，如果回到那个 mitochondria 的那个的医学来讲的话，实际上在在呃任何跟 mitochondria 能够 help 的 mitochondria 可以健康的话，实际上对于这个。呃，他的那个智力哦，他都可以延缓他的一些啊、哦。那所以说有时候我们就会去侦测，就是说从 C S F 里面去拿到一些一些细胞的时候，看他们工作方群，也有去做这样的跟他的 memory 来做比较。那现在目前还是用 clinical trial 做 p e s c a n 针对所谓的 A P P 进化或者呃 beta a m y l o i d 这样来做那个所谓的那个 p e s c a n 在做。目前还是可能要一年后就会有结果。我们现在正在做，我们正在正在做，就是，呃，不但是这个 DNA， 我们觉得这个 RNA 的 gene expression 非常重要，所以 pre treatment 跟 post treatment， 呃呃 ，taking the RNA and see which gene are actually activated or downregulated， then from there to search for a particular gene involved. Once we discover a particular gene, then the development of medication could be Becoming a more effective. Uh, so this is now the research of the way is like this. So 那个现在的 A 菌的话，任何是说我们任何我们任何的组织都有不一样的 A 菌。对一个农夫来讲的话，他皮肤可能是他的 A 菌的，可能是乘上一倍以上。可是他的心脏可能是比一般人的话会年轻很多。所以说，实际上 A 菌的话是 tissue specific 不一样。所以说你要看是 brain 的话，你最好是要找到它附近的一些一些组织。所以说在当然在 CCF 化比较不容易，但是问题是它。目前是唯一 available 可以拿到的那个所谓的 brain related tissue 啊，这是一部分啊。那第二点的话是，我们的那个压力，尤其氧化压力是，由于是 neuron 的组织啊，它的它的 tolerance 非常低，一旦是它有所谓的立线体的呃的问题出现时，代表说它就很容易就会破溃到所谓的 dementia 之类的啊。这它是一点点。现在的这个这个 new direction 就是。Brain 的 cell 你没有办法这个 biopsy， 所以只只有这个死了以后都是 postmortem。现在的 study， 现在开始啊，呃，这个 iPSC 就是这个呃，把这个 skin skin fibroblast 把它养成变作 neuron， 那么这样来研究啊，看正常的跟 Alzheimer 的。啊，这个病人的这个 cell 到底有怎么样不一样？现在的这个呃方向就是跑这个方向。那么再来一个是 C S L 比较近，啊，还有一个就是 nasal nasal 这个 cell 
啊、呃，这个牛郎是比较近，这个这几个，直接你说，直接到不认，没有没有人敢做，啊，所以现在是很多现代的这个 research 啊，都是现在开始用这个培养 fiber b r u s h 养成这个人造的牛郎。现在的这个研究就是向这个方向。这个问题一个测试的最大的问题是，你这个牛呃 skin cell， 那 skin cell 培养成牛绒 cell， 它本身是就是 you turn the skin cell into a stem cell from stem cell you teach it to become a neuron cell。你这个 cell 在跟我们那个 disease cell actually the two two totally different course。要把它要把它 close。Close at least， 比有有有 compare， 能够知道怎么样不一样。我们呃现在做的发生发现有什么 differences？ 不过你 you are absolutely right， that doesn't represent exactly the same uh finding。这个 Alzheimer's cells has due to so many factors。Yes yes。别的绿色的话，除非有健康的什么饭，是是是是，就是晚上给他 smoke， 香烟、抽香烟了，给他吃肥肉了什么，这样子可以试试看是不是，对不对？是是是是。不过这个是起码 full step， 现在的这个没有什么方法，就是这样做。好，谢谢。什么问题？刘昌教授，刚才你的 slide 里面有有说到这个，好像 steroid 的话用长期用，或者是。在这 brain 里面的这个 level 比较高的话，是不是他将来得了这 Alzheimer disease 或者 dementia 的机会比较大？那我们临床上看到有很多人，好像是 autoimmune disease 或者是其他 asthma 这些，有时候要需要长期在 long term use 这这个 p r e n i s o n 我们有没有临床上的证明，就是哎这些人他将来得了这个 dementia 的机会就大得多？这个是这样子。呃、uh, ，我们做的研究啊，就是呃，长期的 steroid 的 treatment 啊，会引起这个 psychosis。你你你你不知道有没有经验？这个病人啊，假如用了太久的话，有 prolonged psychosis。不过 memory 的 deficit， 这个是从这个 physiological study， 就照你讲的，我想可能会产生这个 memory 的 deficit。那那些有 condition 是可以上病的，他们以后阿三美的机会会不会比较大？这个不知道。这个阿彩嘛，啊，这这个用 steroid 才引起阿彩嘛的啊，这个 study 啊不多。那个叶师叶叶教授先。啊 ，Actually, I like to bring up a philosophical question to all three speakers. Okay, today I think I've seen. Is longevity, and in the book it says that happiness and longevity are all we want, and I question that. Is longevity is really that good? Because when when <laughs> Professor Liu <laughs> talk about that, and if we live longer, we may develop cancer, and <laughs> Professor Chuan say if we live longer, we may get into <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that is really question, and also the other thing is that. Today, by looking at this whole uh, the world, I think we are facing the problem of overpopulation. <laughs> if we try to live longer, of course, for us, it's a very uh, selfish. We like to live longer, be happier. But if the new generation keep coming, how do we provide all the resources to this increase? Uh, population. I don't have answer, and I'm not asking for answer. I just express my my concern. My comment is this: living longer is not necessarily happier. <laughs> this is the, and the living longer uh, with the purpose in life, to serve others. You you have uh, your your purpose in your life, and with a mission in your life. You are going to be happier, even though your physical health is gradually deteriorating. Still, you feel that uh, you are very worthwhile living in this world.
I fully agree. Today, we didn't uh, discuss the dementia. Uh, we only talk about the one irreversible dementia, it's uh, Alzheimer. But the vascular uh, dementia is the very preventable and treatable conditions. So that is the very important uh, for recent uh, uh, treatment of dementia. And uh, malnutrition in inducing uh, dementia is also another area of the focus of the studies. There are many others, and the, I think uh, dementia is uh, becoming a very important area for neurologists. But neurologists uh, can make a diagnosis, but uh, neurologists tend to shy away from the treatment of chronic uh, dementia <laughs> in Zeno. Yeah. Can I inject one simple theory? Assumption. We can live to a million years, everyone. That relates to longevity. Now, the theory behind it is that yeah, our body do not make mistakes. Is that biologically possible? No. No, we are our our cell is wired, destined to death. So but the death is not why. How's that been? I don't know. You know, <laughs> you know, several years ago when the human genome project was finished yeah. and yeah. some scientists that predict human beings can live may even live up to eight hundred years. <laughs> okay. So I told you know um, my nurse, I say, Well, it's great. But on another hand, think about you have menopause at age 400, you have postmenopausal syndrome for another 400 years. Do you like it? That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Professor, uh, 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 uh,